What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My channel is focused on helping you free your mind, also adopting holistic tools such as sound healing, meditation, and various other practices that I'll be sharing that I use myself and that I'm also certified in. In addition, also raising the human consciousness. And what I mean by that is this, because a lot of people are asleep. And what I mean by sleep is that they're walking through the day-to-day -day life and not being conscious about how they're interacting with the world. And so raising the vibration of our human consciousness and allow you to practice tools that I share on my channel that's going to really help you with healing and developing um, more ideals to help you free your mind. All right, guys, so let's get into today's episode. Today's episode is focused on helping you understand how are you being programmed? And so I was going to have a board, but I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. Um, so the way you are programmed is from the age of conception. <laughs> so when you're in the womb up until the age of seven, you are being programmed. And so everything that you experience in the womb, anything you heard, all of this is going to your subconscious mind, what people are saying, what people are telling you how to be, how to act, even you're picking up things from other people. And what I mean by that is that if someone says something to someone else, but you overheard it, you picking it up as, it, as if it's yours. So if someone says someone was stupid, you're taking in all this information, stupid, not good enough, never gonna amount to anything. You're not gonna have success in your life. You're a low life, whatever they're saying, negative or positive, you're taking it in because you don't have the ability to reject it. So you're in this sleepy state. And so that's the lowest state when you're in meditation. So that's the med when you're meditating, it's taking your mind through a deep, deep state. And if you've ever been hypnotized or had hypnosis done to you, Basically, what's happening is your brain is in this low, low state that allows you to be subject, so, um, that allows you to be suggestible to these suggestions that are coming through your mind. And so, when you're in that state, you don't have the capability to reject anything. So your mind is just taking all this information in, and that creates who you are. That creates this personality this character, this avatar of who you are. And so you continue to stay in that conditioning state. You go to school, you get told you can't do that, you can't do this, or oh, you're too hyper, you got too much energy. All these different things about you as you are growing in this little body, in this little world. You're listening to the news, you are listening to what parents are talking about, when it comes to politics, when it comes to religion, when it comes to whatever they're thinking about. So that's why you, when you see little kids, they're like acting like their parents, they're basically taking on that personality. That is who they are. They are being like their parents. When people say that, I don't know where they got that from. They got that from what they picked up in their experience. Whether it's from you, whether it's from someone they seen on the streets, a stranger on the road, whoever, they pick that up. Kids are not just picking up things like they're just doing it by themselves. They're picking it up from their environment. And their environment can be school. Their environment can be home. Their environment can be church. Their environment can be another religion. Um, their environment could be anything. They're picking up all these things. And so that creates who you are. That creates your program. And so now you have the media that are putting in all these negative things. Now you became this adult. You keep on feeding that body all of this stuff. You start listening to music that is very low vibe frequency. And we're going to talk about that. You start listening to this mu music. That's all you keep hearing in your head shoot this, shoot that, hurt this person, hurt that. Oh, no one loves me. I lost my love. Whatever the music is, you keep listening to it. You listen to it on repeat when you have 
someone break up with you, let me put on my love song and I'm just gonna cry. And you continue to program yourself with the music, with the media, the TV, looking at um, these dating shows, the drama shows, you're programming yourself, you're activating those emotions. And when those emotions are triggered within your body, when you get triggered from things, what you're doing is you actually are allowing your body to experience those chemicals. And what you're doing, you're continuing to program yourself. That's why when they say when you want to achieve something, you want to emotionalize it because that's how you bring it to existence. When you are emotionalizing those TV shows, that news, how someone treated you, you are continuing to feed the program in your system. Okay? So you're programming yourself to this avatar of who you are. The person who you are today is a collection of your programs. It's a collection of all of your experiences that you have had in life. Whether they're good or bad, or whatever you want to deem as good or bad, they all are an experience that you have been through to brought you to this place of who you are. Because that is what you've been taking in. And so the reason why it's important to know your programs is because when you start to look at your results, maybe there's areas of your life that you don't like. Maybe you don't have the perfect spouse. Maybe you don't even have a spouse. Maybe you don't have the money you want. Maybe you don't have the career you want. There's something within your subconscious from the programming that believes that you shouldn't have it, but that believes that you are supposed to be lacking in that area. And the programming has conditioned you to the current state that you're in. And you're constantly feeling this state of discomfort. What happens? You wake up, you look at your phone, you remind yourself of the condition that you're in. And what happens is you drag your body through this experience throughout your day. You look at your phone to remind yourself as you check your bank account of the zero balance. You look at yourself to remind yourself of how you should have did this or that. You look at yourself and remind yourself of how you don't still have that spouse yet. How you working for a job that you hate. Oh, it's Monday morning. Oh, it's one more day. You are continuing to activate this life. And you keep creating and creating and creating that reality of who you are. What you have. Where you're going. You already predicted your future from using everything from your past experiences you living from your past you can't say you're living from your present because you know why you keep reminding yourself of the past you keep reminding yourself of yesterday you keep reminding yourself of last week last year what you did when you were a teenager how you used to have it you used to do that and you used to do this you keep reminding yourself of lack and you can't create from lack you can't create what you want from a place of lack. You can't create anything. And so knowing your programming, knowing that this has been happening, creates that awareness within yourself to say, hey, what am I listening to? What am I watching? What am I constantly putting into my mind, into this temple, into this body? What am I allowing myself to be around? Who am I talking to? Who am I allowing in this experience? Because they do say the five people you spend the most time with is who you create. That's who you are. You become that five people that you spend the most time with. And though sometimes that's great, sometimes it isn't great. And sometimes those people are your friends. Sometimes those people are your family. And though you love them, I'm not saying get rid of them. I'm saying understand your programming and understand that you got results that you do not like. And so you start making different decisions. You start thinking differently about how you want your life to be. And you can still have those conversations, talk to them and spend time with them. But what you're going to realize is that when you start changing, 
when your life starts to be expanding and you start creating what you've been wanting, sometimes those relationships seem to grow apart. And this is not to discourage you. This is to let you know that it is okay. You can still talk to them. But if you are here and they're there, sometimes they can tell you're not that old self. So they might distance themselves from you because they might want to be around someone that they resonate with, who are like them, who makes them feel comfortable. Because we navigate to people who make us feel comfortable. All right, we're all depressed. Let's hang out together. All right, negative Nitsy, come on over here. Let's be negative together. We gravitate towards who are like us. And I asked my husband a question one day. I said, why does it seem like, you know, people are drawn to just being negative? I remember starting a position. They were like, you're not going to like it eventually. And they kept telling me this every single day. And I stopped talking to them because they were basically trying to convince me to think how they thought about the place. And I am responsible for my own experience. And so when you're being programmed by society, by life, by all these experiences, you allow them to dictate your experience. You're allowing life to dictate who and how and whatever, the way you live your life with those programs. So understanding those programs, it takes time. It takes you being open. It takes you reading, reading things from people who lived a long time ago. When I say people who lived a long time ago, like people, what? <laughs> I was reading books. I read a book that was like published in 1920. And this guy was like super old. I read a book that was published in the 1800s, in the 1600s. Like reading books about people with knowledge to open up your perspective and see the world a different way. There's people here alive that you can read about too that will allow you to open up your perspective about life. When you're constantly listening to music that is on a low frequency, meaning that a low frequency, there's different frequencies, there's levels. And I wanted to show you with my board what I mean by that. And so there's frequencies. There's frequencies that are all the way at the bottom. Let's see if I can do this. And the more you, when you up here, that is the highest frequency. And you can't really see this. I thought I could try this, but you can't really see it. Yeah. But anyway, basically, lower frequencies down here are fear, envy, jealousy. Um, anything envious, those are low frequencies. And the media uses that to allow us, to, the general population, the majority to stay stuck, to stay down here. Because they know that if you are vibrating at a low frequency, then they continue to have you. They continue to program you to stay stuck where you are. And that's why I created my YouTube channel. I spent so much time creating videos and I really didn't know exactly what I wanted to put out there but I knew that I had to share with people my own realization about who we are and how society has been keeping us stuck things like media things like religion teaching you you're not good enough like I was a Christian and I was always told that you are a sinner that you are born in sin. Like, I always felt like I wasn't enough. No matter what I did, I felt like I was never enough. And I just was like, you know what? I give up this religion. If a religion is making me feel like I'm not enough and I know I'm a good person 
And I know my intentions are always to be pure, to be kind to people, to help people, then this is not my religion. There's so it's thousands of religions and I have studied a lot of them. There's not just one. And when I started just really just harnessing a love for life, spirituality, loving people, creating my own belief system. If you have a religion, this is not to bash you. I'm just telling you about my experience is that it was keeping me feeling fearful. And that was keeping me in a low vibration of state, like a low vibration. It's keeping me down there because I never thought I could get up here. It was keeping me thinking about trials and tribulations. Like life does have trials and tribulations, but it was keeping me emotionalizing that stuckness, that feeling of inadequacy, that feeling of not good enough. And honestly, I just had to get away from it. And so when things are making you feel uneasy on the inside, that is telling you something. That is your body telling you, this is trying to program you. When you're listening to music and they're talking about killing people, that is keeping you on a low vibe. When they're talking about having these girls and all this stuff or guys and all this stuff and treating people like this and haters everywhere, like you are continuing to allow yourself to tr attract that. And you are creating that experience. You're going to continue to find there's haters. You're going to continue to find that there's no good men out there or go no good women or whatever you identify with. There's no good people out there to date. Because you are listening to things that are programming you. I used to think there was no good people to date. I was like, I would be by myself. But I was listening to things and people programming me from their own experiences realizing that's not true and I really I sat down and asked myself what do I want in a relationship what do I want this person to look like what do I want not like physical characteristics but like what do I want them to look like meaning like are they they're kind are they beautiful inside and out like simple stuff like that how do I want them to treat me and I found that person. But if I kept having the mindset and continue to keep that program that there's not good people out there, then I wouldn't find that. I wouldn't find that there's actually good people to date. There's actually a really beautiful world outside of the media if you turn off the news and start looking for news that is good news. Like there's places in other countries that are really doing powerful things. And there's places here in the U.S. that are doing powerful things. But we wouldn't know it because we don't go looking for it. We make it easy for them to program us. We make it easy for them to ingest our system with things. Because it's easy. It's comfortable. And they know that the majority likes comfortability. And they, who knows, maybe that we're all been conditioned so long that we don't even know that we're controlling people, that we're putting people in a low vibrational state. Maybe the unawareness of how the life is has causing us all to disconnect from what life really is. Life is love. Life is an experience. And there's going to be some ups and downs. There's no getting out of it, and that's okay. But to think that everybody is evil, to think that you cannot amount to anything, to think that you cannot have the life that you want to create is ridiculous. So programming has been keeping our society stuck and it's time for us to rise up. It's time for you to really know that you are a powerful being. It's time for you to sit down and ask yourself, what have you been listening to? What have you been told about money? What have you been told about career? What have been to you been told about your body, about sex? Like who you should have sex with? When you should have sex? What have you been told about how you make decisions? What have you been told about what you should like? 
what you shouldn't like, what other religions are, what are other races, what kind of stereotypes have been told about these races? What other stereotypes have you been told about different cultures? What have you been told that is allowing you to be conditioned? Because the truth is we're all one, we're all connected. There's no division, we're all the same. That's why there's some things that I got from religion that was very helpful. Like God lives inside of me, God within me, because God is within you. And that my blood, the blood of, of Jesus, like knowing that your blood is the same because we're all the same. So know your programs, monitor what you're watching. What are you listening to every day? Who are you around? Who are you allowing to bring gossip into your life? If people are gossiping, when you interact with that, you are allowing more gossip to come here to your life. You're also cutting yourself off from source, from all the things that you are going to have in your life. Who are you allowing to bring negative energy towards you? Talking about how they hate this or hate that. Who are you allowing to do that? And if you don't know what to say when people are doing that, that's okay. But do not engage in it. One of the things I got from um, a YouTuber, his name is Jake Ducey. He told, he was talking about his channel. He said, that's not part of my belief system. And that was something he started telling himself whenever he was trying to reprogram himself to a, a different mind. And so if someone is saying something, you can say, that's not part of my belief system. Or that's not part of my belief system anymore. Like, and that's okay. And if you don't feel comfortable, say, all right, I got to go. Or whatever you need to do when you need to leave a conversation, say that. But just don't allow people to intoxicate you and program you to be something that you don't need to be. So if you want to change your life, it really starts with you freeing your mind and getting rid of those programs, getting rid of what society has been trying to condition you to be, been trying to condition you to be something, to stay down here. Because if you get up here and know the truth, then the government, religion, society, the media would not be able to control us anymore. So y'all, it's very important that we share this video. Share it however you want. It's time for us to raise the consciousness. It's time for us to raise the vibration of the world. To start realizing that we are healers, that the power is within ourselves. Because we just forgot. When we got here, we forgot. We got, forgot who we were because when we're born, we already automatically told who we are. And who we getting programmed by, they don't know either. They don't even know who they are. And so they just use all the tools that they had, what they got from their mom and their dad, from their ancestors. And that's how the society keeps repeating itself. We keep repeating our cycles of life because we keep conditioning ourselves to that state. We keep bringing people into this world and the cycle keeps continuing. I decided I wanted to stop that cycle, that I wanted to create a legacy for my children so that they can know that they have the power, that they can have whatever and be whatever, and that to be self-aware and not allow outside opinions to skew their perspective, to create a limitation, to create a box around who they think they can be, to allow them to know that they can jump out of that box. And that's the same thing I want to do for you. I want you to know that you can jump out of that box 
that it doesn't matter where you came from because I came from <laughs> poverty. I came from a family of seven children, me being the youngest. We didn't always have everything. We didn't have it together all the time. And so don't think that because you're looking at me that you don't think that you can have it, that you don't realize my story is very large. It's, it's a big story. And we can talk all day about it, but I don't have to. I just want you to know that if I can do it, you can do it. Anybody that you see doing something is a reminder of what you can do. So that's why you shouldn't be envious. If you envious of someone, you're basically rejecting that. <laughs> we can go to a whole thing about that. You're rejecting what you're envious of. You are repelling what you are envious about, what you're jealous about. When you're talking about somebody with a lot of money, you're basically rejecting yourself from having that. When you say that rich people are this or that, you're basically telling yourself, you don't want to be like that. So no money over here. When you're telling yourself, oh, there's no happy marriages, you're telling yourself that you don't want to be married. All right, we won't get married. Cool, we keep attracting all these people who are not going to treat us right because we didn't get married. You keep telling yourself these things because you're thinking about your old experiences. You're thinking about your programs. You're thinking about what other people have been through. And you're basically repelling everything that you want to bring in your life. So also write down, what am I repelling? And be aware as you go through your day to day, like when you see someone, are you being jealous of them? How are you act, uh, reacting in yourself? Do something that comes to mind is like, mm, they think they're better than me or who they think they are. You're rejecting who they are. And your body is saying, we don't want that. We don't want to have a nice car. We want our beat up car over there. We want to be struggling, trying to get to work. Yes, what we want. So what are you repelling? What are you putting in your mind? Whether it's reading, whether it's listening, or whether it's what you're watching. What are you putting in your mind? Are you watching a bunch of drama shows? Are you watching things that are all about knowledge, that are helping you open up and free your mind from the veil that's been covering the lens of the truth. Because you can have and be whatever you want. And there's people centuries ago that have been able to create it and didn't have the technology like we have. So turn your phone off. If it doesn't have anything that's helping you, it's keeping you stuck, turn your TV off. Turn your music off and tune in to your mind. So take these exercises, be aware of yourself for the next seven days. I want you to look at yourself like from a bird's eye view and seeing how you interact with people. Are you being judgmental? Are you being jealous? Are you being envious? Are you being, what? how are you being? Also, that's going to help you learn what are you repelling from your life. Next, monitor your self-talk. What is your inner, inner dialogue? Because 95% of what's in your head is not who you are. It's who you've been conditioned to be. So if you make a mistake and you automatically call yourself stupid, who called you stupid a long time ago? When have you experienced that? Do you believe you're stupid? Because when you do that, when you call yourself things in your head, you also are programming yourself. You're allowing more things to come into your life where you can be stupid. So monitor what you're saying, your internal dialogue, write it down, reflect on it. Where did it come from? Areas of your life. I want you to rate areas of your life one through 10. So your finances, your relationship with your spouse, if you got one, if you don't got one, that's fine. If you have children, your relationship with your children, your relationship with your family, um, your career, also your relationship with your friends too, I meant to say that. 
your career. Um, if you don't have a career, your business. Um, let's see, let's see. Your health. Rate it. Your um, the relationship with yourself, your spirituality, whether it's religion or spirituality. And I'm trying to think what else. Yes, those areas, rate them one through 10. And what I want you to do is to rate why is this a 10? And if it isn't a 10, rate why it is whatever it is. Then I want you to write down in those areas, what is your belief about those things? How do you see relationship as? How do you see connection with your children as? How do you want to raise your children if you have children? How do you want to be in a relationship? What kind of spouse do you want to have? How do you want to be instead of what society say you need to be? The gender roles. Um, lastly, ask yourself, have you, are you living the way that you just wrote down? If you said it's a 10, then are you living that way? If it isn't a 10, then how can you start living that way? How can you start operating from what you believe is true, your values, how you value those things, your mission as far as who you are when it's, when it's connecting to yourself and how you operate through life? I want you to write that out and get really crystal clear on those areas. And if there's some imbalance in your finances, then ask yourself, what is the reason for that? Was growing up, you heard that money doesn't grow on trees, that you're not made of money, that um, rich people are snobby, whatever around that. Career, it's hard to find a career. You gotta work hard to build, to, to move up in a company. Have you been told that? That you have to work hard? You don't have to work hard. You just have to take steps, but it doesn't necessarily have to be hard. Then I want you to, after you do that, so grading those areas, the next thing I want you to do is to ask yourself, what have you been listening to? What have you been listening to? Music wise, what have you been listening to other other things like media, um, podcasts that are keeping you in a state of fear? What have you been watching on TV? Um, what has been programming you? Has it been conversations that's been programming you? Like, what has been programming you? And do some self analysis be honest with yourself and say okay all right i've been very negative lately or i've been hanging out with a lot of negative people or people who was always complaining or i don't like my job i get up on mondays and i don't like it okay if you don't like where you are then create a plan have you sat down and asked yourself all right i don't like where i'm out what i'm gonna do have you actually did that and ask yourself if you have then why you haven't done it? And if you haven't, why haven't you sat down and asked yourself, why are you still somewhere that you don't like? Why are you in a relationship you don't want to be in? Why you can't find relationships? Maybe you have a limiting beliefs about some relationships. Maybe you think that married people are not faithful. Maybe you think that married people are not happy. Maybe you think that people who dating are not really happy. Whatever your beliefs around it. I want you to write your beliefs around those areas too. Because it's very important that you know what your programs are and you are able to look at it on a sheet of paper. Because the next thing I want you to do is to write down what you want your belief system to be about all those things. And where that came from before you write down what you want it to be. But where did those came from? And then I want you to remove it from your system. There's a deep exercise that you can do where you actually breathe and you close your eyes and you call upon that belief system that you don't want to believe. The belief about money doesn't grow on trees. And you start, you, there's a limited supply of money. Like I no longer believe that. I believe that there's a limited supply of money and that I don't have to work hard to, to get it because I already deserve it. Because I'm worthy of it. That I am abundant. 
okay? So I know it's a lot that I gave you here, but I really think that's just really gonna help you with freeing your mind and getting out of that conditional state that has been keeping you stuck so that you can get to where you wanna go. And also use this video to help others. Don't just keep it to yourself. Share this with others because the more we share, we also help the world improve and get better. We also help raise the consciousness. And honestly, that is the most humbling and the best thing that we can do for others is to help them. It's to see that, all right, I've been through this and I came out on top. Let me help someone else come out on top. So if you found that this video has been helpful for you, then share this with someone else so that they can also benefit from it. And they can also have that same experience. All right, you guys. But thank you for tuning in, freeing your mind with Shonda Jenkins. And I catch you in the next episode. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe, like it, comment below what was your favorite thing, and share this with somebody you love. All right, you guys. Bye.